Gold has been the most prevalent currency throughout the history of the world, with its first uses tracing back to 643 BC in modern day Turkey. The value of wealth soon became the amount of gold one country or individual owned, leading to the powerful nations of Europe to exploit their ability to explore to pursue the riches of mother nature. Flash forward to 1848, when gold was first found in California. This discovery would eventually lead to the mass migration west known as the gold rush. 13 years later, in 1861, the United States printed the first paper currency. At the beginning of the 20th century, the Gold Standard Act of 1900 made gold the only metal to be exchangeable for paper currency and set the value of an ounce of gold at $20.67, which is almost $650 today, accounting for inflation. The gold standard allowed the world trade market to expand rapidly. Where countries used to complete transactions with huge amounts of gold, they could now exchange currencies backed by the government. However, this system was faced with extreme volatility as currency values would drop whenever miners would find new gold deposits. The gold standard would be abandoned multiple times after the Gold Standard Act of 1900, generally in times of great duress like World War I, II, and the Great Depression. It was apparent that the system needed a change, and that change would be the Bretton Woods system. The Bretton Woods Agreement was introduced at the conclusion of World War II in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. The conference took place over three weeks in the summer of 1944 between the Allied nations from the war. At the end of the deliberations, the US dollar replaced the gold standard as the global currency, essentially making the United States the most powerful country in the world. The agreement also created the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, which were put in place to monitor and maintain this system. The IMF was crucial to the success of the Bretton Woods system as countries promised not to engage in trade wars that had plagued the duration of the 1930s. However, they would not have made this promise if a world central bank did not exist. The purpose of the IMF was to aid countries in propping up their currency by bailing them out in difficult times. However, countries did not agree to give the IMF the full extent of power a global central bank could have and did not allow it to print money. Instead, countries would contribute to a pool of currencies and gold that was held by the IMF. This was important because it rendered emerging countries to the discretion of rating agencies like Moody's and Standard & Poor's on their financial standing and credit ratings, which would be used to value their currency to the dollar. Under the agreement, the United States became the only country that had the ability to print dollars. Countries agreed to maintain a fixed exchange rate with the US dollar, as the US dollar would still be backed by gold at the price of $35 per ounce. You may be wondering why the US dollar was chosen as the all-powerful global currency and why everyone was okay with that. Well, they didn't have much bargaining power. Prior to the conference, the United States already held 75% of the world's gold supply. Most of Europe was in physical and economic ruin due to the aftermath of one of the greatest conflicts in human history and needed significant help to rebuild. This made the United States the obvious choice for a global currency, whether other countries liked it or not. The eventual collapse of the Bretton Woods system was foreshadowed shortly after its inception, as demand for the dollar would increase more than the value of the gold it was backed by. The Bretton Woods system was finally abandoned in 1973. In the years prior to 1973, the United States was suffering from the economic nightmare known as stagflation, which is a period in which inflation is combined with a recession. Unfortunately, since the US dollar was a global currency, foreign investment was causing prices to rise, whereas domestically, the US was in a contractionary period in their business cycle. In an effort to combat stagflation, President Nixon began quietly revaluing the dollar to gold, initially at $38 per ounce of gold, and then to $42 per ounce. The plan eventually backfired as people started figuring out what was going on. Rumors were spread that the elite were removing the gold from Fort Knox. This was not the case as a group of journalists were allowed in to verify that the gold was still there. This was the only time in history that civilians were allowed in Fort Knox. In response, Nixon once again took drastic measures to combat the situation and unhooked the dollar from gold, effectively ending the Bretton Woods system forever. Gold quickly shot up to well over $100 an ounce 
more than twice as much as it was valued in the Bretton Woods system. However, the Bretton Woods system has not been totally forgotten. The IMF and World Bank still exist today, and the United States is still the reigning champ as far as economic excellence is concerned. The only thing that has changed is that the US dollar is backed by nothing but a promise and a smile from the US federal government.